Now, what we just did was a linear search. Can you imagine what's going to happen when we put that search with a million names? Is it going to go fast or slow? It's going to go slow. What do you expect? Very slow, yeah. But at least we got our sort routine going. Now, there's lots of different ways to sort things. And if we get things sorted, then we can do a really, really quick search. And I'm going to be showing you the binary search. But before we do these fast searches, we have to get everything sorted. So here's three different ways we can sort. We can do the bubble sort. And this is what they usually show in computer classes such as this, or even like programming fundamentals. And it's really slow, and nobody uses it except computer careers teachers. Then there's the selection short, it sort, and it's 40% faster, and that's what we're going to use today. Then there's the insertion sort, and it's really similar to selection. So if you know the selection sort, you can figure out the insertion really easy. And it's 200 times faster than the bubble sort. So we're just going to go for an increase of 40%. And later on, after the demo, we can always uh, switch and go to the insertion sort and make it go even faster. So we're just going to go for the middle ground right now just to meet our deadline tomorrow. Now, here's how it works. We got two rules. Find the smallest item and then move it to the beginning of the unsorted part of the list. Yeah, that's not too bad. So here's the four things that we have to track. First, how long is the list? And how, how are we going to figure that out? Well, this is, right now we're doing an array, so we can't use dot size. So dot length. So we'll use my array dot length. We need to have a variable, the index, where the list is unordered. And where does that start right now? We're going to start out with index 0, right? Because it's not ordered yet. Then we want to know the index where the smallest item is. So these two things are going to be moving al along as we finish it. And then we need a variable to hold the item when swapping them. So here's our, our test data that we've been working on, all six items. And we're going to look for the smallest item. So as we go down, we say, what is this? We compare these two. Is this which is smaller? 3, 1, or 2, 0? Two, 2, 0. So which is smaller, 2, 0, or 0, 1? Oh, one. Oh. Careful. Oh, yes. two, zero. Two, zero. So 2, 0. Which is smaller, 2, 0, or 0, oh, 3? Two, two, 0. Which is smaller, 5, 5, 4, 2, 0, or 421? So, and then if we compare the others, we can see this is our smallest one. My famous uh, glove has helped us out right away. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the position index 4 and we're going to swap it with index 0. At the same time, we're going to increment our, our point to our smallest and change our pointer to the next index that's unsorted. So we know this is sorted. So now we go through the next one, which is the smallest out of the list? Or out of this list, what's the smallest? 55420. Five, so let's swap it with itself and move our pointer. So we move our sort index up one. And now our sort index is at two. So now, out of these, which is the smallest? And again, my glove tells us it's 55431. So where's that? That's going to swap with 56001. And you see how I keep moving my, my, my sort index over so I know these are all sorted. And here down at the bottom, I'm keeping track of that. So boom, I do the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one. And now I have a sorted list. Pretty slick, huh? 
All right, now we got to see what it looks like in Java. So we're going to make a method out of it. And all we have to do is pass in the address of our array. Now, are we going to change the array or are we going to change single items in the array? Yeah, we're going to change the array. We're not passing in single items. We're, type, we're passing in the whole address. So here we go through our whole array, and we're keeping track of everything. So we're saying, here's our minimum index. Notice our index is x plus 1. That's because our pointer is moving across as as we get things sorted. So do you see, usually this is zero, but right now this is going to be like a moving target. We're keeping it while that minimum index is less than the array of the length, so when it gets at the very end, then we know it's sorted, and then we increment it. Everybody see the trick in here? It's mainly how we're setting up our counter. So then we loop through it, we look for the smallest. When we find it, we do our swap. Oh, when we find it, we change our sort index, and then here we do our swap. We're taking one of the items, putting it in a temporary spot, taking our sorted thing, putting it at the beginning, and then taking our temporary spot and putting it back. So we're just doing a typical swap. So we have two for loops. Here we're looping through our array, then we're looping through to find the smallest, when we find it, we do our swap, and then we loop through to the next set of array with it being a little shorter. A little shorter, a little shorter, a little shorter. Not too complicated code, right? Everybody get it? Again, if you type this in and step through this with a little piece of little block of data like the six things, then you'll you'll see how this works really, really slick and it'll match those pictures that we went, just went through. All right, here's what the code looks all together. Here's our main. Here we print out our array. We do our select sort, and then we print it out after sorting and print our array again. So here's our array. After sorting, we double check our data. Did it put it in the right order? All right, I love it when it works. Now, how to search for something? Well, we can do a, a sequential sort. And we're going to ask two questions. Remember, the reason that we did a sort was so we can do a, a faster search. So here's the two questions. Does the element we are looking at match? Is the element larger than our search item? So here's the algorithm in English. First, we're going to set a flag to false. We're going to declare the found index. And then we're going to walk through the array. And if we find it equal, we're going to break out of the loop because we learned our lesson earlier. If the flag is true and the item equals the search item, then we save that index. Otherwise, we say not found. Now, here's the same code we had before. We're going to comment this out so we can, you see how I'm doing two test cases here? So now I'm searching for 1, 2, 3, 4, which I know isn't in my data. And I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to, it's the same code, but I changed my method. Now I'm going to do a sequential search. And here's what the data looks like. So here I set my Boolean flag. I set my found index, assuming it's not found. And then I go through my loops. And if it's greater than or equal to, again, remember my two rules. Does the element we are looking at match? Is the element larger than our search item? Because all of our items are in order, we can say if, it's, if our item is larger than the search item, then there's, there's no, none of them are going to match after that. So do you see what the logic is? 
Now, that, that, ta that sequential, though, is still too slow for us. So we're going to do a binary search. So how's a binary search work? I say a number between 1 and 100. Who's going to guess what number it is? I better write it up here. Okay. So I got a number between 1 and 100. Who's, who's going to make a, a, an intelligent programming guess on what the next number is? He's going to say 50. Who said 1? Okay, so oh, you are, we're a contrast. Why did you say 50? Because it's in the middle. So we're going to go 50. It's less than 50. What's our next guess going to be? 25. 25. I got to check. I always forget that number. It's less than 25. What's 12. the next 5. guess going to be? What? 12.5. Well, what, which way do you want to go? Let's go 12. 12? It's higher than 12. 18. 18. And what did you do to get to that? Just uh, half the difference between that and the next one we guessed up. So we, have, we, we subtracted what? 12 from 25, yeah, right? And half the so 25 minus 12 gave us? 13, and we divided that in half. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So it should be, oh, and then 6 added plus existing current number, or 12. That formula is really important, by the way. So remember that formula. So then we came up with 18. It's higher than 18. Oh, if higher. So what'd you say? 22. 22? I picked a good number. It's lower than 22. It's higher than 20. And it's 21. Now this is probably the worst case uh, search because we had to go through quite a few steps. But do you see in the binary, what's, where does the binary come in? Why do they call it a binary search? Because you cut the field in half each time? Base two. Yeah, yeah, it's base two. Every time it's cut in half. You know, we're cutting our list in half. And, and we don't have to worry about the other half. Do we have any concern at all about anything greater than 50? As soon as I said it's less than 50, we cut out a list in half. So we went from a million names down to 500,000. And then when we cut that in half again, we went down to 250,000. And so you see how we're chopping huge blocks out of our searching. Where we, what was the worst case if we did sequential on a million names? One at a time. Yeah, how many, how many, worst case, how many names would we have to look at? 999. 999,999, right. All right. How many do we have to look at if we do uh, a binary search? I had that number near the end. It cut. It's seven. you. You'd be amazed at how many. How low? How many? Well, it was seven in our case. Well, in our case, it was seven. But uh, for a million names, I think I have it at the end of the presentation. So, when you hear about binary search, the first thing I want you to think about is, oh, is the data sequential? Because a binary search won't work if the data is not sequential. So the first thing, you, and, and if it's not sequential, what do you have to do? You're going to have to sort it. So the very first thing in a binary is, it, is the data sequential. Then when it's sequential, then you go through the formulas. And here's the formula right here to divide an array in half, is you take the first and the last, divide it by two, and that's your middle. So here I go in, I'd go my first plus last, here I figure out my mid, and then I do my, and this is again my search that we did before, does it match my Z search? If it did, it, it was found, it's true. Otherwise, I figure out if it's greater than, 
then I do my mid minus 1, else I do mid plus 1. And then just for my own debugging, I print out which iteration it is. If not found, then I set my mid to minus 1, which means I didn't find it, and I return the mid. Otherwise, I return which, which index it's on. Don't forget, when you do this, to change the name of the, your method to binary search, as a, you know, change your sequential to binary. But do you see, this is basically the sequential with just a few changes. Well, I didn't do a million, but if we had a thousand items, we'd only have to make 11 loops through the list, or 22 comparisons. Oh, here's our million. On our million, the ordered search would look through 500,000. The binary search would only have to look at 42 items. Quite a difference, isn't it, between looking at a million items and looking at 42? So you can see how the binary search is, is so much more valuable. So there you go.